Hi guys, this is Mike. In this video, I'm going to talk about MoGraph fields within Cinema 4D. Okay, so in Cinema 4D R20, there's a um, addition to the Cinema 4D called fields, and that kind of basically replaces the falloff system within Cinema 4D. So if I go to MoGraph, and um, first, what I want to do is I want to add in an object into the scene. So let me go to primitives and we'll just choose a cube. And then we'll go to MoGraph and then we'll go to our cloner. Now, MoGraph is something that's a, pretty much a game changer within the industry. When Cinema 4D first released it, it really changed how you can... Um, create animations and uh, do motion graphics. And what Cloner, uh, what MoGraph is, is basically the ability to animate within Cinema 4D with, um, without relying on the timeline and making keyframes. Although you can use keyframes and the timeline in conjunction with MoGraph, but it gives you a way of kind of doing a procedural animation. So at the heart of MoGraph is our cloner. Now the cloner, what it will basically do is we'll clone out uh, various objects that you put in. So if I make my cube and I, I select it and then drag it underneath the cloner, you can see this little icon move from its arrow to the left and to the arrow underneath, uh, towards the bottom, excuse me. And then you can release and it'll go underneath your cloner. So right away you see your viewport change. So let's go to our cloner and you can see we have our tabs, our basic coordinate, object, translate, and effectors. So here in this mode, you can see we have a few, a drop down where it gives you a few different types. You have uh, object, linear, radial, grid array, and honeycomb array, which is fairly recent. I believe this was released in R18. So you can kind of see your cubes here, and then you can see we have our count and our offset. Uh, we have a few options here and our coordinates down here. Uh, we also have our transform. We can change our color. Right now it's set to white. And we have our effectors. This is where we would add in our effectors. You would see our effector list. So going back to our objects tab, we can add in more of, more of our clones. And we can use this with our count. And if I zoom out, holding down our two key, and with our one key, we can pan. You can see that we have our cubes. We can spread these out in our Y. You can see that we have so many that it sort of just kind of blends. So let me go back down a little bit. You can see this kind of separate as you move up in the Y. And you can also adjust this. Maybe if you want to go to your cloner, you can make this maybe 50 by 50 by 50. And this will kind of give you a, a little bit smaller object to work with. And then we can kind of bring this bring this down. So if I press O on the keyboard, it's going to snap us right to our object. And what we can also do is we can choose, say, maybe a grid array. Let me pan this so it's in view. And you can kind of see how this grid array, uh, grid array works. We have our various counts in the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And depending on how many you add in, changes the, you know, the, the basic how this these objects are displayed. So you're kind of looking at this and it's like, well, this is very even. You can see how even this is. And you can also change the size here as well. Just like in the linear fashion, you can do this as well as in the grid array. 
but you can see how this is very even. What if we wanted to make this a little bit more random? Well, that's where the effectors come in. So I'm gonna go to MoGraph, and right down here we have a drop down, and you can see all the different types of effectors that we have. And just as the name sounds, it affects your clones and you know your your MoGraph in, in various ways. So just for an example, I'm gonna show you the random effector, and I'm gonna click on this here. And right away, you can see that it randomizes the displacement of your clones. And if I go to my MoGraph and go to effectors, you can see that this is in your list of effectors. And you can turn this off in this field as well. So, okay, so now that we have that and we go to our random effector, you can see that we have some options which we can do to adjust. We can adjust the randomization in the X, the Y, and the Z. But what we can also do is we can go to our fall off. Now, if you notice that we have a, um, you notice that we have, it's very, a little bit different than what we had, well, a lot of different actually, compared to what we had before in our fall off section. So if you've used Cinema 4D in previous versions, you're gonna know this, this is a completely changed. So if I go to this linear field, and you can see it has a little arrow, a little black arrow in the right hand corner, bottom right hand corner of this object, you know that we have some more options to choose from. So if I go to say a spherical sphere, a spherical field, that at this point, what we can then do is change where this field is, it's an object, it's an object underneath our random effector. So if we go to our size, we can increase the size of this uh, field, of this uh, sphere, excuse me, and you can see how this affects the randomization. So whatever is contained within, within this sphere will affect this, uh, this cloner grid array. And you can bring this up, and you can bring this down, you can bring it in any direction that you want. Um, and this is where you can animate, which is pretty cool. You can animate this. If I go to my um, auto keying, if I click on auto keying, you can see that we have a, um, a, a, a red frame that goes around our viewport lets us know that auto keying is now uh, in, it has been activated. And so what we can then do is if we go to our sphere, we can go a little bit ahead in our timeline and then move this. And you can see that if you go down to our timeline, that it adds in a keyframe at our the point where we moved our, our timeline to, as well as a keyframe at the beginning of our, our time, uh, timeline. So make sure that once you're finished animating, once you're finished moving your, your field around or whatever you're animating, make sure you diseng disengage the auto keying by just clicking this button. And you can see now it returns to a white normal frame. So now, if I press play, you can see how that animates. If I just let that play through. So it's a great way of uh, making your um, objects. Now, this is, I'm just using a basic cube, <clears throat> excuse me, but you can use any other object that you want. Something maybe you modeled, something, uh, another primitive, and then, of course, you can also use all these other effectors within MoGraph. This is just basically just a, a demonstration, but you can absolutely use various different um, effectors within this list to, again, give you a lot more complexity. So and I'm going to go through all these in uh, future tutorials 
where we get a little bit more in depth and being able to actually, you know, do something. <laughs> but this is a good place for you to start to just kind of giving giving you an understanding of this of fields and how it works. And um, interesting enough, I can move the cloner through the field as well. But download this um, exercise file. You can I put a link in the description to download this file and just kind of play around with it. Play around with this uh, spherical sphere. Uh, sphere. Um, go into the um, uh, the field, but you can also change the various different uh, types that you have. You can choose a box. You can adjust the size of this box, um, and you can use all these different uh, different types, and they all affect it in a different way. So, you know, download this. Um, I put a, a link in the description. It's also at uh, astronomicskills.com. You can download this exercise file as well as all the project files that I've made uh, so far on this channel. All right, thanks guys for watching. Bye.